Hello, hello. Good morning, Facebook. Thank you all for joining in today. My name is Kadeem One. We have an awesome, wonderful session coming up today with the Look of Everybody community. Uh, so glad to have you in the space. Um, today is the topic, as you can see, is Manifestation Magic 101. So we're going to be talking about manifestation, what that is, um, and talking about some of the other aspects of manifestation that maybe you have not heard before. So we're going to get into that today. So thank you so much for joining us in. Hello, folks on Zoom. In the Zoom space, welcome in. So nice to have you here. Let's see who's here. Adam, hello. Good morning, brother Kadeem. How you doing this morning? Good morning, I'm well. Thanks. How are you? I'm, I'm, every day is a good day. Good, good, good. Glad to hear that. Uh, who else? Uh, Abimbola, hello, hello. Uh, peace and blessings. Peace and blessings. Gina. Good day. Hey girl. <laughs> good morning. Good morning. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. How are you? Good to see good, you. Good. You too, you too. Thanks so much for being on. All right. Uh, and Marilyn. Hello, how Good are you? Good morning, all. Good morning. Thank you so much for joining in today. So as you all can see, the topic for today is called Manifestation Magic 101. So I'm going to be talking about manifestation, what that is specifically, uh, how it works for us uh, in our life. And in addition to talking, I always like to give some tools for us that we can sort of keep going on our respective journeys. So I'm gonna be offering us some tools to help us uh, move forward in the best way possible um, regarding our manifestation goals and dreams. And um, yeah, some, some maybe how to overcome also some manifestation blockages. Cause I think sometimes some of us are trying to manifest some amazing things, but realize, hey, why is it that I've been manifesting this thing for how many years now and what's happening? What's happening? You don't see anything happening. So we're going to be sharing some ways that we can enhance or increase our manifestation journey um, and share some of the uh, laws that are in place uh, that allow us to manifest. Because I think some of us, you know, we hear about manifestation and law of attraction and all this stuff, which I'll, which I'll get into later, but we don't exactly know some of the other laws that are in effect to really help us uh, manifest our desires. So we're going to be going over that today. So it should be a good session. First part of it is going to be very much theory. I'm going to be talking, <laughs> I think, a lot, I think, in the first part. Uh, ask some questions. Also, you all can uh, drop some comments in the chat as I'm asking questions and saying some things. Also, folks on Facebook, too, because, you know, we have people looking out for your comments also. Um, it's going to be, you know, talking, chatting for the first part. And then the second part of our session, we'll get into... Uh, some more practical things and some exercises. So, yeah, it should be a should be a great morning. Let's see who else is in the space. Uh, is it? Do I pronounce this? Keisha. I'm sorry if I mispronounced that, but I see that you're here. Yes, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Awesome. Yes, yes, it's Keisha. Good morning. Keisha. Good, Good morning. Thank you so much for being here. And Zakia. Hello. Thank you so much for being here this morning. Mm -hmm. Yes, thank you, thank Grand you. Grand Rising. Mm -hmm. Grand Rising, thanks so much for being here. Yeah, so we have a nice, nice session here this morning in Zoom and on Facebook. So, all right, see y'all soon after the video. Stay woke, it's time to get up. 
Kadeem, uh, and the topic today is Manifestation Magic 101. So before we officially get started, i just like to open up with the invocation for help from our divine helpers. So as I do this, you can feel free to pray to whoever you like or connect with, whoever you like to connect with uh, spiritually as I lead us through this, this invocation. To the divine source, the supreme source, to the light, love, and power of the divine source, God, which you may call by many names, to all of our spiritual helpers, all of our angels, our angelic guides, to our divine family, to our spiritual teachers, to all the great, great ones, to the spiritual lineage of the spiritual teachers that I'm connected with through Master Grandmaster Chawa Kaksui and Mahavir Ruju Ling. We thank you. We humbly invoke for your divine light, divine love, divine power, divine oneness, divine protection, divine openness, divine goodness as we move to this session today and wake up everybody. We're so grateful and full faith, so be it, so it is. Awesome, so manifestation. Do we know what that is? Have we heard about that before? So write in the chat, have you heard about manifestation at all? Manifestation. Have you heard of it? If you have, what do you think it is? Zakia says yes. Jacqueline, hello, Grand Rising. Joy, hello, hello. Um, yes, so let's see. Just type in the chat, have you heard of it? Zakia says yes. If you have heard of it, what do you think it is? I think sometimes we uh, have heard about something, but we might have heard about it from someone else who heard about it from someone else, who heard about it from someone else. And maybe we don't have like really clear experiences of it. Um, I think some of us also, when it comes to manifestation, we might look at YouTube videos and uh, other online stuff about manifestation. You know, which is great. It's a, you know, a very great start. So uh, let's see what else do we have. Louise says, yes. Um, Ms. Renee says, manifestation is the art of alignment to one's desires. Come on with the dictionary version. I see you. That's great. Um, Jacqueline says, yes, what Renee broke. Exactly. That was great. Dictionary version of manifestation. Uh, Marilyn says, yes, attracting something you desire by believing, by believing you in it. Yes. Thank you, Marilyn. Exactly. Okay. It's all great. Have any of us practiced manifestation before? Like, have we actually done any specific techniques to help us at all? And if you have, I'm curious to know what they are. There's various manifestation techniques out there. So many, so many, so many. And again, I see a lot of YouTube videos about manifestation techniques and um, also, also, also a lot of books as well on manifestation as well. The Rise of the Unknown Heroes, yes. Kinyofu affirmations, good, that's great. Kinyofu visualizations, Zakir, not intentionally. Okay, good. So yeah, so I feel like you maybe, I guess, manifest, not intentionally, meaning you still do it, but it's not like intentional. So you have like the, I guess, undercover ways of just kind of connecting Zakir, I guess, in that way. Um, Kinyofu says, believe, get it, or are you gonna, Unmute yourself, Sakia. Were you talking? No. Okay. Um, Louise says yes to several workshops. Sakia is muted again. Good, 
Uh, yes. Um, right after I said not intentionally, two of the things you said, um, uh, King resonated with me, which was visualization and affirmations. I do those things. But usually, though, when I manifest things, I'm not consciously manifesting them. I'm something I want, and I and then it happens. <laughs> uh, yeah. Best example um, recently was finding my myself on on um, Glory Island for my birthday last year. Um, I knew the elder, an elder who was going to be there, and on my birthday and at the beginning of the year, and I commented that it would be really, really nice to, to, to be there for my birthday, uh, which is Juneteenth. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, I was, That's I, still, I still couldn't tell you how, I just was. <laughs> Great. That's good. That's awesome. I mean, you, I guess you, you put it out there in the universe and it was just like, oh, she wants to go to Gray Island for, you know, so here it is. <laughs> yeah, that's great. Thank you for sharing that. That's awesome. That's beautiful. And I think also part of manifestation you have to realize is that our words, our thoughts, even what we write on social media has power, has meaning. So sometimes we think we're saying stuff like, uh, you know, I'm so broke or, uh, you know, why aren't people ever nice to me? Like you're kind of manifesting even some of that stuff too that you write. Because so all that stuff, although it may not be intentional, realizing that you still putting it out in a new universe still has an effect for sure. Kathleen, we have some messages um, from Facebook. So let's read those. Sure, good. All right. Um, so Cheryl, you put, this is from Facebook, but didn't say from home. I don't know if that's your words. Making our thoughts, dreams, and wants a reality. And Robin Brown says- That was the Fiat Towns thing. Oh, okay, great. Robin Bullock adds vision board. And Jacqueline says, I'm not sure, but affirmations and visualizations are a big part of it. Faith with works. And the rise of the unknown says, did with Dr. Tony. And I don't know if I'm pronouncing that name right. And Safia says, okay, so Cheryl repeats that. Uh, and, and Jacqueline doesn't claim the negative. Rukia, Rukia, Rukia from Facebook says, manifestation is creating or evoking thoughts, desires, and expectations. Awesome. These are great. These are all awesome. Thank you all so much for sharing. So I guess getting more into it, manifestation, um, I guess I can tell you, I mean, Zakir already shared, she was able to manifest being on Gory Island, which is fantastic. Um, I would say part of my manifestation journey, which I'm still on it. So I'm gonna tell you right now, everything that I tell you is based off of the world according to Kadeem. So these are things that I believe to be true, that I believe have worked for me. Um, also things that I've been taught as well from my teachers that have helped me sort of realize that okay, this is how to manifest, this is the, the way it works. So based off of that, I mean, I feel like I've been able to manifest some pretty amazing things. Like things I've been like, wait, is this, is this real? Uh, one of which, me upgrading to this apartment that I'm in right now. Um, Gina, who's here on the call, uh, did a, she wrote these COVID monologues. So these monologues based off of things happening in COVID. And I happened to be acting in one of them, one of the monologues. And one of the characters says in the monologue, how you upgraded to this sweet pad in COVID. I've upgraded to this sweet pad in COVID, uh, which is, it's pretty, it's pretty amazing for where I'm at. Um, in many ways, a dream come true in regards to what it is that I wanted in regards to having a new place for myself. Um, so between that, I've been able to manifest uh, working at Google and Bloomberg and perform the Madison Square Garden back when I was really intense in regards to my career in the arts, performing and dancing and choreographing in the arts to perform there. 
uh, been featured in Forbes and Vogue and the Sunday Times, which is the UK's version of, of the New York Times. I'm like, all of this, it's amazing. How does this happen? And I realized that there were certain things that I started to implement into my life regarding manifestation that I know I have not heard publicly anywhere else. Certain things I've learned in classes, things I've learned from my teachers that like isn't really on the ethers of the ethernet or internet at all. So I said, okay, well, maybe I need to just practice maybe some more of these things to help me. So here's some things that I'm gonna share. I think for me, the biggest thing I learned in regards to manifestation is before sometimes you can like add things in, you gotta take things out. And some of y'all on the call know what I'm talking about because this is one of my big things in manifestation is that sometimes in order for you to get more of what you want, you have to clear stuff out that's already there that no longer serves you. So think about it this way. You have, let's say a cup of coffee. Maybe it's stale, disgusting, been sitting around for so many years, just disgusting, nasty coffee. You get this amazing, beautiful, wonderful new cup of coffee or this, you know, whatever, this jug of coffee. It's like, great, I have fresh coffee here. Also, I wanna get this fresh coffee in this old coffee cup. You pour <laughs> the jug of new coffee into the old coffee cup. So you have coffee spilling everywhere. Spilling, 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 spilling. spilling. Is that the best way to get new coffee? This is the old cup? Or does it make more sense to pour out the old coffee eh, and then pour in the new cup of coffee? I think a lot of us, I feel sometimes in regards to manifesting what we want are sometimes trying to like add in so many things, adding in things without realizing you have to dump out the stuff that don't work. So all the times when you said or someone else said, oh, you're broke, or the times maybe you heard growing up, we can't afford it in regards to money. All the times you might've heard, money don't grow on trees. I'm not an ATM. Uh, when, maybe when it comes to love, you felt that people told you things that were not great and made you feel bad about yourself. All those things are still within us, the subconscious. The best way for us to manifest what it is that we want is sometimes realize that sometimes we're not manifesting what we want is because some of those other things that we've been told that we've been fed are still within us. It's still the old disgusting coffee cup. But in order for us to really get this amazing, warm, brand new cup of coffee, we have to pour out the old stuff and the pour in the new things. So we're going to be going through an exercise today to, um, Help us, help us start to clean <laughs> and dispose of the old coffee. Y'all are, are funny in the chat. Cheryl talking about I'm not going to drink from that first example. No, we should not. Not at all. Disgusting. Um, oh, Jacqueline. Oh, Jacqueline says, I always remember Bill Cosby's reference in the Cosby show to putting a delicious steak into a garbage can lid. Exactly. Sometimes an example I use is the same thing in regards to if it's like you have a garbage can, it's filled, or, or pail rather, it's filled with so many different things, you know, so much garbage, disgusting things. And then you get like this amazing, beautiful jewel, this pearl. You try to put it on top, what happens? It's gonna fall off. You keep all these jewels. Yes, I got jewels, put it all on top, the pail. They're gonna fall off. Because your pail is already filled with garbage. In order for that jewel to stay in, you gotta pull stuff out. And I think sometimes for some of us, you might have these moments of manifestation, like manifesting like these like small things here and there, which is fantastic and it's great. So what's happening is there's a moment where the jewel goes on top, but sometimes things can't stay because the garbage, the pail is too full. You gotta clear stuff out in order for the jewel to stay in and for it to really uh, be within your whole, your whole being. 
Um, y'all are <laughs> the comments. I love y'all are live today. I love it. this is great. This is good. Very interactive. All right. So that's that's the first thing we have to we have to do. Pour stuff out in order to get stuff in. So how many of us have heard about law of attraction? Let's see. How many of us have heard that? Marilyn says yes. Jacqueline, yes. Zakia, yes. Okay. So who has heard, heard about it? Can you approve? Yes. Awesome. Okay. Louise, yes. Okay, good. Y'all are. Y'all are. On our roll, Cheryl says, oh, sure. Awesome. Um, this, am I pronouncing this right? Quasi? Quasi, yeah. Okay, awesome. I can learn more. Yeah, awesome. Yeah, great. Law of attraction. Amazing. Fantastic, right? Trying to attract certain things you want, but realizing it's a law. It's a law. What does that mean? Meaning it's not like, okay, I'll just believe in this thing and maybe it'll come true. And okay, well, I guess it may be come true, it may not come true. No, it's a law. <laughs> like when done right, like you will receive it. How many of us though have heard of the law of repulsion? Here about law of attraction, do we know the law of repulsion? What is that? Because that this essentially law of attraction, law of propulsion, it's almost like two sides of the same coin. Rowland says never. Yeah, interesting. You can talk about law of attraction or even referencing the movie. I think it's a movie. In, is it a book too? It's not a book. I don't know. The Secret, the movie, the documentary, The Secret. It's a book law of attraction. It is a book too, yeah. It's a book too? Okay, thank you. The secret, which is great, love attraction, attracting what you want. Esther Hicks, yes, fantastic. These are all great things. But law of repulsion, and I'm gonna be sharing all of these other laws that come into effect when it comes to this. Law of repulsion, essentially what it sounds like. Repelling things. And it could be repelling things consciously or unconsciously. So sometimes those moments, Maybe we've experienced this in which like, you have these moments where it's like, you want something so bad. You wanna manifest something so bad in your life. Maybe it's a career opportunity, maybe it's a certain amount of money, whatever it is, you wanna manifest something so bad. And it's like, you want it, you want it, you want it. But in many ways, having that desire so strongly is almost like telling the universe, I don't have it, I don't have it, I don't have it. Why? Think about holding something. I have a pen, right? I want it, I want it, I want it. Right, I want it, okay, okay, you want it, you want it, okay, great. But sometimes the best way to really get what you want, because think about holding something, right? You want it so much, it's still connected to you. Realizing that when it comes to manifesting, it's not us that's doing it. We're putting stuff out there into the universe, but it has to go out. But it can't go out because you're still holding on to it. So in order for it to manifest, you got to let it go. So sometimes those moments in which we um, like want something so much, and then sometimes you say, ah, I give up, whatever, it's not going to happen. Ah, whatever, I release it. Or those moments when we're in prayer where it's like, God, I, uh, I can't do nothing else. I release it. And sometimes in those moments, that's when the thing comes. Because you saying I give up, whatever, that's you letting it go. Think about it this way. Let's say you actually, yeah, I guess, you know, it's morning, so we're, we're on our coffee kick. Let's say you have an assistant or someone you know, you ask them to go to the store to get you some coffee. They say, okay, be right back. They start walking out the door. Then you call them again. Hey, can you? Come back here. They come back. Can you give me a cup of coffee? You're like, uh, okay, I'll be back. They leave. You call them back. Hey, can you, can you come back here? They come back. Can you give me a cup of coffee? Okay. 
you go out. So it's the same thing. It's like in order for you to sometimes get what you want, you gotta let the thing go. You gotta let it go sometimes and not always call it back. So that's one aspect of it. Another aspect of it is sometimes we want the thing, whatever the thing is, again, using the coffee as an example, we want the thing so much. But think about sometimes the person that's getting it for us, some of us say, okay, well, I want you to get a cup of coffee, but I want you to first walk down this block once, turn right, walk three times, turn left, walk once, then make a zigzag and then go straight and then turn right and then there's a story. Where sometimes if you just say, okay, I want the thing and not give me direction at all, sometimes it, it can come to you faster. But sometimes you directing it and giving all these directions sometimes also confuses it. But if you say, here's the thing, again, going back to the example of the assistant of someone that you're asking to get, to get your coffee, it sometimes might be better for them to take a shortcut to cross through the park to get your coffee and to come back or to get in the car and drive and not make all the zigzag turns and stuff. I think another thing for us in regards to love attraction is sometimes we need to say the thing that we want, say the end result, let it go, and not talk about the process of, of how it's going to get there. So sometimes the process of how it's going to get there may not be the same way that you're, you're going to receive it at all. Might be something better or something different. So it's a matter of letting the process go, letting go, focusing on the end result of what it is that you want. So love repulsion, love attraction, two sides of the same coin. Kadeem, there's a question in the chat from Kaisha. She says, can you manifest for other people like family members? You can, you can. Um, okay, so here's the thing. Manifesting for other people and helping other people in many ways is like prayer. You pray for others to help them, that's great. The thing is that that's all we can really do, essentially, is use our intention or even something maybe some of you use some of these techniques to help them, but also realizing that other people, and I'll get to some of these other laws soon, other people also have their other stuff that they also need to work out. Or have other stuff that are preventing them from doing what they want because of the stuff there. For example, as I mentioned before, like the best way to get something you want, like a jewel or get the amazing cup of coffee is to first pour out the negative stuff and then get the positive stuff in. But sometimes you might try to pray for someone or you know help them manifest something. But if their can, their pail is so filled with so much garbage, even if you try to manifest for them, that jewel will only stay on for but a few moments and then it'll fall off because they have their own work to do as well. So yes, you can, you can help someone for sure, but they also need to be doing something to also help along their process as well, for sure. Okay, let's see. Okay, so we have to talk about um, love attraction, love repulsion. Okay, here's another one for us that I'm sure we've heard of before. Law of karma. Hmm? Karma, law of karma. Again, these are all laws. So it's not like your opinion of karma. It's not your opinion, it's a law. We know that to be true because there's many aspects of our lives that mention this, law of karma. Um, let's see, what's, what's, what's the one uh, in the Bible? Um, this is uh, do unto others. That's one. Do unto others as you have them do unto you. That whole back and forth. Um, Science has it. Newton's third law of motion states every action as an equal and opposite reaction. So what you put out, you get back. Now, the usually we think about law of karma as like negative. Like if somebody does something bad to you, we say, karma's going to get them. Karma's going to get them, which is true. But also realize if someone does something good to you, karma's going to get them too. Karma is neutral. Karma really isn't negative or positive. What happens with karma is, is the effect of an action, of any action. So we see it as positive or negative through our eyes, but the universe sees it as just an action. It's an action. 
So what you put out, you get back, positive or negative. Sometimes what you get back can be multiplied depending on what it is. Karma in some ways, your, rather your actions, sometimes act as seeds. So sometimes you do something, you do an action, a deed, sometimes you're planting a seed, whether positive or negative. And sometimes it takes some time for that seed to fully grow into a full tree. And then you start to sort of reap some of that stuff that you did. Now, I'm gonna say something that might sound interesting, but we're here, we're open. <laughs> Karma does not go with the person individually. Karma goes with the soul. What did I say? Karma does not go with the person, it goes with the soul. Meaning, something you might have done last lifetime, two or three lifetimes ago, some of that karma might just be maturing now in this lifetime. In the same way, some of the things that you do in this lifetime may not fully mature, may not get it back in this lifetime, but it might come in the next lifetime, lifetime after that. Karma goes with the soul, not with the individual person. To realize that there's many levels or layers of the karma. Another mind-blowing thing with karma. Here we go. We think karma is just individual, based on the person. That's one level or layer of karma. There are so many other levels and layers of karma. Yes, there's self karma, but guess what? There's also family karma. There's community karma, where you live. Even the community of friends that you hang around. That's connected to also karma. Your karma is connected. Race karma. They say your race and ethnicity. There's karma there. Karma based off where you live, your city, your state. Country karma, world karma. So karma goes on these different levels. It's not just the self. But realizing like your family, your friendship group, where you live, your ethnicity, you're also tied to that karma too. There's these different levels and layers of stuff. And sometimes we think, oh, we're working on ourselves and doing stuff for ourselves and whatever, which we are, but also realizing that we're also affecting other things in our life. In addition to our neighborhood, our city, our community, our family, where we live. So karma is, it's big, it's massive, it's major. All right, I will stop there because I think there's a question. <laughs> um, can you fix karma in the present, right? Is that the question? Yes. Okay. Can you fix karma in the present? You can, you can. So there are different things you can do. And I guess fixing karma in the present, I guess you might think about it maybe, can you fix maybe more negative karma to positive karma? I guess in that way, in regards, you can, for sure. Um, let's see. So let's say that there is, you're having an issue with something, let's say right now in life, maybe you think it might be karmic. You can do something that's similar to that thing to help your karma. So for example, let's say, um, no, let's say you're having issues with a place where you're living or finding a home or your home life isn't that great. So if you think maybe that's karmic, and maybe to help you along in that path, what you do is you help someone else that's having home issues. So maybe it's a friend or family member that you know that might be having some issues dealing with home stuff. You can offer some advice. Or maybe sometimes people might be like, oh, I'm going through a rough time. I, you know, whatever I got kicked out. I actually had someone recently, that's one time of that. They moved into a place like a month ago and their roommate started to like kick them out. So if I'm having home issues, I can say, okay, let me help that person get through this experience. Maybe they need, need a lawyer. 
I can get a lawyer for them to sort of help them with, with this experience. Even maybe it's, maybe it's just recommending someone. So in many ways, sometimes if you're dealing with the issue, sometimes cleaning up the karma regarding it, negative karma regarding it, is doing something positive that's associated with that particular thing. That's one thing. I'm trying to think if I should say this. I will not say the next thing because this is a public audience. But the next thing, it's a more advanced version of clearing up karma. I'm not going to say it though, because it's advanced. But um, I think I think I say it in my three hour version of the class. So at the at the just so you know what's going to happen. At the end of this, there's a, a offer for you to take the three hour version of this workshop that I'm teaching today. So this is Manifestation Magic 101. It's only for about an hour, hour and a half, but there's a version of this, which is about three hours, which I go deeper into some of these other laws and what they mean and other techniques that you can do to really help yourself. Um, Got to stuff. So that, but I guess that's, you can call that maybe Manifestation Magic, the master class, whereas this one is Manifestation Magic 101. Very basic beginner level. So I'm not going to go into the other one. But again, something you can do to help if there's negative karma is to uh, do something that's kind of similar that kind of relates to that and sort of help yourself move move past it. If that makes sense. Okay, I'm gonna keep going so I can get through some of these other stuff before 8 a.m. Um, in regards to manifestation, you have to also focus on the mind because sometimes you know they uh, it's sometimes said that um, you become your dominant thoughts or your dominant thoughts dominate your life. We think the dominant thoughts on the conscious level, but dominant thoughts aren't really on the conscious level. Dominant thoughts are underneath. They're the subconscious and unconscious level. So if you think about the, um, what was that thing? The Titanic, right? When it hit the, was it the iceberg? Might look like a small little thing on top of water, but underneath the water, it's a big, massive thing. Same way our conscious, Small thing on top of water at the surface, but underneath, unconscious, subconscious, it's it's massive. So we need to sometimes work on some of that stuff. And some of that stuff we can work on some of that stuff is if you dump out the cup of coffee or dump out the garbage to bring in stuff that you want. So again, we'll we'll go through an exercise of, with that today. But realizing that the mind and clearing out the mind is important and putting in things in the mind to help you on the subconscious, unconscious level is really helpful in regards to manifestation. Um, what else? We have epigenetics. Epigenetics is essentially connected to what's sometimes called blood memory. Realizing that there are things that have passed generation to generation. Sometimes things that even aren't said, but that are connected literally to the blood family. And that family connection, things that are passed down can sometimes be every and any and everything from trauma to disease. I mean, disease is a prime example. You go to a doctor, a person says, oh my God, whatever, high blood pressure. Oh, well, my mother had it. My grandmother had it. Epigenetics, stuff is passed down. We think that's just on the physical level with disease and stuff, but that's also passed down on the energetic level as well. So epigenetics is important. Got to keep that in mind. And again, realizing that, um, Again, sometimes all this stuff I'm mentioning, a lot of this stuff is, uh, if you can clean this stuff out, I think you are more than halfway there. I think a lot of the times, this stuff is just sitting there and it's stale and it's no longer serving us. But I think if we can clear a lot of this stuff out, we can really start to manifest things faster and stronger than ever before. Uh, what else do we have? We have feng shui. Feng shui. So feng shui in Chinese literally means the way of the wind and the water. And when we think about feng shui, we might think about maybe sometimes like putting things in certain parts of our homes or office that might bring us more prosperity in different ways. So feng shui is important, like spacing things in your apartment in the right way. 
Um, so there's, you know, one prime example of a, of a feng shui thing is sometimes when you come into your home, you should not really have your shoes on because you're bringing, bringing in the dirt from outside into your home. Um, another one is uh, sometimes spacings of different things. So I know a lot of us might be doing work from home these days. Uh, sometimes it's important for us to have our work location facing a certain direction. Usually it's better to have it facing uh, north or east or northeast to having it face west or south because the way the currents on the, the way that the world sort of turns and operates is better to have the currents in regards to goodness prosperity tends to come from the east or the north so having your office space your setup having it facing east or north is really good so feng shui like that which is great in space but also people feng shui who are the people in your life Right now, who are they? Take a look around. Hi, people. How y'all doing? Are they messing with your feng shui, your vibes? Because again, as, as I said before, karma is not just self, but it's also your community, people you hang out with. So sometimes certain having certain people in your inner circle, sometimes kind of messing up your vibes to bring in what you want. Because we're all connected, but people that we're connected with the most or strongest are people that are closest with us. And sometimes we're unable to manifest what we want because some of those people in our inner circle sometimes might need to not be there because they're not good for us. Two more. Soul's purpose. Your soul's purpose. Sometimes we're going to manifest what we want because. It's not in alignment with our soul's purpose. So for some of us that might say, oh, I want to, I don't know, I'm just going to use an example. I want to be a billionaire. That sounds awesome. But your soul might be like, mm, that's nice, but this lifetime, it's, it's, it's not, it's not going to work for you. Because realizing that you becoming a billionaire might be out of alignment with what your soul came here to do for this lifetime. Maybe your soul wants you to do something in regards to helping someone in your community, in your neighborhood. Um, but realizing if you're a billionaire, you move out the neighborhood, you can't help that person, which will start, which will start a domino effect to help someone else. So then some of us sometimes, you know, when I have like these massive projects, you know, which is great to help a lot of people and to change the world, which I think is fantastic. But also realizing that if you are working with someone, just one person helping someone, you're already creating massive change. Realizing again that we're all connected. We're all connected. So you're hoping that one person has a domino effect to help other people as well in your space. You'll say yes to having big world mission, which I think is fantastic and awesome. But realizing that if you're not there, if you're not there yet, even helping the person on the street, the homeless person on the street, giving them a cup of coffee or a dollar or your, your friend that might need help or your family member that might be in pain. Like all that stuff, you think it's always just so small, that's massive. Some of that stuff is really beneficial to help yourself, to help your life and to help your karma. I know there's a lot of questions. I will, I will get, I'll, I'll, I'll get to them um, soon. Also, last one, and then I'll stop for a bit moment and take some questions. I've been talking for a long time. Um, luck. I know some folks may not believe in luck. Uh, I believe it's a real thing. And I believe luck really is, for me, three things. People tend to say, sometimes this person is in the right place at the right time. Luck. I like to add also, Right vibration, right place, right time, right vibration. That's in the luck. That's my definition of luck, just so you know. You can be like, oh, I heard somewhere luck is this, 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 that. Oh, no, luck. that's Kadeem's version of luck. <laughs> so you're not going to hear that anywhere else. I love Oprah Winfrey. 
Oprah Winfrey, I think she's fantastic. I think she's wonderful. Um, I more of my connection with her is more of her being interviewed by others, opposed to her interviewing other people. I mean, she's known as you know was known at one point as the queen of daytime TV with her own show for over twenty five years. Number one for over twenty five years. No, for for twenty five years exactly. Number one daytime talk show for twenty five years. Known as an uh, known as an uh, amazing journalist, interviewer. I find for me that some of her best lessons for me have been me hearing her talk about her life or her giving speeches. She has a lot of amazing spiritual truths, I believe, to share. However, you know, we know Oprah's great. She's fantastic. She, she's wonderful. However, I believe also Oprah, prime example of how luck worked in her favor. How? I believe if Oprah was born today with TikTok and YouTube and Instagram and all this stuff, I think she still would have been successful, but not as successful. Why? Because she was born at the right time in a moment where there wasn't so many other distractions where daytime TV was still a thing. People were watching daytime talk shows consistently. That was, that was, that was like a big thing. And there wasn't any, anyone else like her on daytime TV. Also realizing that Oprah was also born in America. If she was born in India, would she still be as successful? That's talking about place, right? She was born in America, right place, right time. When she was born, she wasn't born today. She was born, what, over 60 years ago. So put her in the right time for her to come on and do it a daytime talk show. Realizing Oprah also had the right vibration for her to be where she is at this moment. Because she could have been doing other stuff, doing other stuff, you know, having other vibrations that might have been negative or lower. And she wouldn't be where she is. So realizing right time, right place, right vibration is important. And that's luck. So I believe those are all of the aspects in regards to manifestation that aren't spoken about. You know, hear about law of attraction, all this stuff, affirmations, vision boards, which is great. But there are these other laws that we also need to pay attention to in regards to manifesting what it is that we want. So I'm gonna stop talking for a bit. Maybe have Kenyofu or Cheryl say some things and say some comments and things. Okay, so the, the, the chat was moving around um, Jackie's scenario and she asked the question about how to get her husband specifically to take his shoes at the door before he comes in the house. How to get him to take his shoes off? Right. So it's a more practical question. Uh, how? I don't know. I mean, I guess you ask him. Right? Does he take his shoes off? Hey, I've done that. <laughs> he will not listen. He, he doesn't agree that it's a problem. And I believe it's a problem. The only way I was able to get them to even consider it is by changing all of the carpet to wood floors so he could see the value of taking his shoes off so he wouldn't scratch up the wood floors. But even with that, I'm noticing that he's still doing it because it's a habit. And so I'm thinking, you know, I already started creating a mud room in my laundry room to try to um, get him to stop. I just haven't completed it. I need to put a little bench in there so he can sit his behind down and take those shoes off. But <laughs> it's, it's annoying. And it's like, it's not just a matter of scratching the floors. It's just like you bring it in dog mess, whatever is out there that you're stepping in. And it's just, just the thought of it makes me nauseous. I, I walk around barefoot most of the time, so I can't stand for, to have stuff on the floor. And he doesn't seem to notice it or feel it or anything. It doesn't seem to bother him. Do you show him your feet after he walks in? Oh, he don't care. I can go take a bath. I could wash that off. But I'm like, but that's what you put down on the floor. And that's what's there. You know, if we had a baby in the house, maybe he'd act better. But he doesn't seem to think that we need that at this point. 
That's interesting. Uh, I mean, I know you say you, you change the the floors, but do did you get maybe like a runner so that when he walks in, maybe some of the stuff with the shoes kind of gets. All oh the yeah, time? I have a runner. I have runners. Oh. I have um, area rugs, all of that kind of stuff. But at the same time, I'm like, all you need to do, because I'm the one doing all of the housework. All you need to do is take those shoes off at the door because I have a nice little pad there. All my shoes are there. You can see the shoes on them coming in and out. And just follow suit. Take your shoes off and come on in. And your socks will be so much more cleaner because <laughs> he likes his socks white. <laughs> I don't know, Kadeem. I'm working on it. I'm working on it. <laughs> you working, girl. I'll, I'm sorry. I don't got nothing for you there. I mean... I think, you know, if, if it's a habit he's used to, he doesn't really see it as a huge problem. I don't know. Well, obviously, but you're the one doing the cleaning and stuff. So I mean, mm-hmm. that's a difficult place. Mm-hmm. I mm-hmm. wish I could magnify the dirt for him so he could see what's happening. <laughs> that might be helpful. <laughs> Maybe. But thank you for your question. Thank you, Jacqueline. Thank you. <laughs> of the unknown you have your hand up Teresa peace and blessing family um I believe that we manifest every day because we say stuff out of our mouth that we shouldn't say and it happens so um I'm just being a lot more cautious with the stuff that I say and hi Kadeem I miss seeing you baby oh thank you been sugar 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 (laughs) Um, thank you for being on. Would you say, say that again? I said thank you. Thank you so much for, for being on today. Yeah. So um I just think that like I wrote um I was a friend of mine asked me to do something about mental health. So one of the words that I talked about was being mindful. And I just feel like we need to be mindful about what we're saying because we actually speak in doom and gloom to ourselves because we're saying certain things on a daily basis and acting like it's no big deal when it really is and so um um like that, that i saw this book called does your tongue need healing our tongue does need a healing because we have been taught certain things um certain stuff that we've been taught and you know we don't even understand how much what we've been taught and how we think about stuff even me it's like i i was i had a dream the other day and in the dream it was showing me this beautiful room. And I said to myself in a dream that I was not good enough to walk into that beautiful place mm-hmm. because of what me having to me operating in this in the spirit of I don't I'm not good enough. And so when I woke the spirit was like, you got to stop that because you 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 manifest a new stuff and you cannot. And if I open up a door for you, like and it's also in the dream it was like a table and everywhere I went everything just popped up and so what the revelation I got was that every place you walk in you're going to be provided for but if you operate under that I'm not good enough you're going to miss out on stuff so I was like oh I was like "Mm, mm, mm." I was like please spirit help me to know um that I'm everything that you have for me is what I'm supposed to have and so um I I've just been working on my mouth because working on my heart, my mind, everything about that I'm supposed to have it. And it does it has nothing to do with what I haven't done, or what I have done, is because I am operating in a place where everything that I need is is being provided for me and I'm ready to have it. And I'm complete. Thank you for sharing. Yeah. I mean words are words are powerful, thoughts are powerful. There's times where sometimes I even think something and it comes true. I mean we might have all all have had that experience too. Even times maybe we think about someone and then maybe within that second they text you or call you, that's manifestation too. So words and thoughts for sure have power. For sure. 100 percent Jacqueline says life and death are tongue. And from Facebook, Jim says, when you argue with reality, reality always wins. Uh, say it again. When you argue with reality, reality always wins. Mm, mm, mm. That's good. That's good. Yeah. So it's not much more in the chat for um, regarding recent conversation. Okay. Um, it was all around the shoes. <laughs> awesome. That's great. All right, everyone. 
Well, okay, I know it's almost five to eight. So before I get into more of the practicum, practical stuff, lead us through a few exercises, I just want to give a chance for those that maybe have to leave um, by eight uh, to have this chance to leave. Is it, and I'm jumping ahead, is it possible to show the offer screen now for those that have to leave? Sure, I can do that. Thank you. So for those that are staying, you're going to get a little preview of this offer that I have. Um, but for all those that are here today in the Woo community, thank you so much for being here. Uh, for those that have to leave, thank you for being here for the first hour. I do have an offer for those that are leaving. Um, so I guess, as I said before, I taught this uh, workshop, Manifestation Magic workshop, a three hour version. Uh, initially was $50, but for Woo members that are here today, you get it for $25 within the next hour. So what you have to do is send payment through Venmo or Cash App, Venmo, dollar sign, Kadeem1, or PayPal, paypal.me, backslash Kadeem1. Once you do that, then send me an email to Kadeem at Kadeem1.com for access to the course. So uh, again, that course is three hours. I go into deeper detail about the laws in regards to uh, as, as I mentioned before, some like laws of karma, all those different aspects of it, the repulsion, all those different things I mentioned before. I want to that into, into some deep detail, plus it'll lead you through a very deep, like energetic cleansing experience, sort of dump out some of that stale coffee and uh, to remove some of the garbage and then lead you through exercises to then supercharge your goals, various exercises. So. Again, it's a three-hour course, online, virtual, initially $50, but for Woo members, $25 for the Woo. So uh, feel free to take that offer. Um, figured I'd share that with the folks today since my workshop today was a manifestation magic. So thank you. Okay, so um, let me see. Before I get into the more practical stuff, I think I saw Kadeem, one. Yes. I want to ask, does this mean that the workshop is available to you in your own time? Correct, it is. So in your own time, you get a link. You can watch the first 15 minutes, take a break, whether go to the next hour, take a break, so you can watch it at your own time, correct. Yes, exactly. Um, any other? Wasn't there was a comment, I think, that Cheryl, that you mentioned in the WhatsApp? Marilyn, yeah, um, might be Marilyn asked a question earlier that we didn't get around to. And um, I wanted to ask if Marilyn, if you could come on um, off of mute and maybe even come on camera and share your question about friends. Let's see where she is. Okay, maybe she was one who had to leave at eight o'clock. Oh. Yep. She's gone. Um, hmm. I mean, can you is can you read the question? Is it? Yeah, I'll read the question. Oh, okay. No problem. It was um. Yeah, you, you kind of addressed it, but it might be something that other people have a question about as well. Mm -hmm. it says, what can you do if you're practicing law of attraction and are trying to manifest something, but people that surround you tend to be overly negative? Hmm. Good question. Great question. Uh, there are various things you can do. Um, people around you are overly negative. Um, one thing you can do, I'll, I'll share, let me see how many things I wanna share. I'll share three things you can do. Uh, the first thing you can do is you can take what you wanna manifest, materialize in your life. And also realize, I like to use the word really materialize because manifest, well, as manifestation could be anything, could be in the ether, could be energetic. But what I think most of us are trying to do is to materialize because then it comes in the physical. That's what we want. We want it to materialize, not just manifest. Manifest could be anywhere. It could be energetic, it can be mental, it can be emotional. You really want stuff to materialize, to come in the physical realm to help you. Um, but one thing you can do is when it comes to trying to manifest and materialize what you want, Write it down. 
the act of writing in many ways gets the energy of it out of your space, puts it down the paper, and in many ways allows you to let it go. So writing it down helps. So when other people are kind of saying stuff that's negative, it won't, um, the energy of the thing that you want to manifest won't, the energy of it won't be seeping out nearly as much because the energy of it isn't around and near you. You wrote it down and you let it go. So it's almost like the universe already has it and it's taking it already. Writing it down is one. Another thing you can do is a um, technique called cutting cords. Cutting cords. So simply, if you imagine a samurai sword, like a ninja samurai sword, hi yeah, right? Samurai sword, and you imagine. Okay, let's see, let's turn this way so you can see. Okay, imagine the front of you. This is another aspect, energetic aspect. Is that people that we, we can we talk to on a day-to-day -day basis, people that um, our family, friends, we're all connected to these energetic cords, invisible cords. So think about our olden days where you used to have a landline telephone. Blue phone. Hello. What what's what's at at the end? Usually a cord that goes into the phone, which goes into the wall. The same way we have these energetic cords that connect us to other people that we talk to, that we interact with, family and friends. Even down to like the grocery store clerk or the waiter or waitress at the restaurant. It's a cord. Those cords aren't very strong though, you know, because they're like in passing kind of, you know, okay, get, you know, give me my food. Thank you. Here's, you know, the money for the bill. Thank you. Okay. Right? Very thin cords. But cords that connect us to other people, people you see, we see on a day-to-day -day basis, people at our job, those cords are thicker and stronger. And if some of those cords are not disconnected, some of those cords can drain us of our energy, energy that we need to manifest stuff. So one thing you can do is a technique called cutting cords. So simply you just imagine, you just imagine literally a samurai sword in front of you and just cutting the core connections between you and others especially those you don't want to really be connected with. So cutting the cords is one. Imagine a samurai sword cutting in front, front of you and also the back of you. To imagine it, you can also use your hand. You can use your dominant hand, haya, to cut the cords. Imagine the cords in front of you again, and just cut, and imagine, you, and imagine you're cutting your back. That's it. And then after that, I would say, after cutting cords, if you have a spray with, well, I have my spray here, that I make, I make um, the, these natural aromatherapy sprays. Um, get a spray with some oils and water or just hand sanitizer and just sort of cleanse your hands so that the cords are no longer connected to you. So that's the second technique you can do. Third technique, third technique you can do is a technique called um, shielding. Like shield, like you shield yourself, like you're in like a shield, called shielding. So you can imagine yourself like super small in front of you. And imagine like, you know, imagine your hands are like white light. Imagine just kind of shielding your small self. Shielding, you know, shielding. I commanded to stay for 24 hours or 48 hours. So shielding. So those, those are three techniques you can use to help yourself protect yourself from negative people. There are a few others I can, I can do. Maybe I need to do, maybe that should be my next woo course like energetic shielding like how to protect yourself i see it's here how to protect yourself from, from energetic vampires or something i love it Katrina. go for it say it again i love it go for it <laughs> okay maybe that'll be my my august one how to shield and protect yourself because there, there, there's a few other ones that i can share but with time I, you know there's just really no time okay all right are there any other questions you think I should answer, Admin, before I go into practical stuff? No, there's more confirming comments, but no questions. Okay, great. All right, so I feel like half an hour left. So let's try to go through three 
give you three. Three techniques right now that you can do to help to start to allow you to sort of manifest things um, in your life. So first thing we're gonna do, uh, we're gonna do one to help you um, kind of get rid of, you know, the stale coffee, the trash, the garbage that's in the pail. So you can sort of bring stuff into your life. So at this moment, if this one should be short, maybe like five minutes. Um, and then we'll come back and talk for a bit before we go into the next two. So in this moment, everyone, I'd like you just to close your eyes. And take a deep breath in and release. And again, deep breath in and release. And again, deep breath in and release. Last time, deep breath in and release. Good. I want you to imagine in front of you the ocean. The ocean. The most beautiful ocean you've ever seen. And see the ocean. Hear the waves. Really be there now. And this ocean is a powerful extractor. So anything you think about in this moment that you no longer want through this experience, the ocean will extract it and release it from you. So in this moment in time, we're going to focus on three aspects of our life that we can release to the ocean to get rid of. First aspect, any stress, anxiety that you may be feeling, just bring it up and out. It may come up as a cloud, as smoke, as words, images. However it comes out to you, just let it come up and out and breathe it out to the ocean. The ocean is a powerful extractor. Releasing it all to the ocean now, letting go. Breathing out all the stress, all the anxiety. From any and all situations now, letting go. Good, keep going. Releasing it now to the ocean. Let go. What matters is your intention. So let go, release now. Good. Keep going. Another 20 seconds. Release it all to the ocean now. Good. Good. Now let's focus on any moments, thoughts, feelings of low self-esteem. Not feeling like you're good enough to do something, to pursue something, to have something, to be someone, to be better. Releasing it all now to the ocean. Any moments where you felt low, you felt like you couldn't do it, you felt like you were a failure, someone told you something that wasn't that great, just release it now all to the ocean, let the ocean extract it from you. Now, releasing it all, letting go. Good. 
good. Take a deep breath in and release and let go now. Good job, good. Keep going. Another 20 more seconds. Let go, release. Good. Our last one. Any moments where you lacked resources to do something. So the resources could be anything from lack of money, lack of connections, anything. Lack of anything. You feel like you're lacking some sort of resources, lack of time. Just bring it up and out and release it now to the ocean and let go. Yes, let go. Bring it up and out, let go. Now, release and let go. Let the ocean do the work for you. Just bring it up and out, release it now to the ocean. Take a deep breath in and release from all parts of your body, all parts of your being now. Release, let go. Good, keep going. There's 20 more seconds, keep going. Keep going, release it all now to the ocean. Good. I want you now to imagine a samurai sword in front of you. Imagine cutting all cords and connections between all the things that you released, letting it go to never come back again. Cut, cut now, cut. It is done, it's released. Pulling now to the ocean. Cut in front of you and also the back sides of you. And on the sides, samurai sword, cut, 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 release. It's gone forever. I want you now to think about a goal, something maybe you want to manifest in your life. A goal, a dream that you have. And I want you to think about it. Now, having it not have manifested. So maybe you want to dream a goal that it hasn't manifested yet. I want you to think about that dream or goal. Think about it having it not manifested. And notice how it makes you feel. The fact that this dream, the fact that this goal has not manifested. How does it make you feel? as you feel all those emotions connected to that thing that you want to manifest that has not manifested, I want you to notice that there's a point in your body, as you, as you think about this, there's a point in your body where you feel it the most. Point to that spot in your body, first impression. Don't overthink it, just point to a spot in your body that you feel it the most. Good. I want you to notice that there's a color or a series of colors to that point that you spotted, that you pointed to, that's a spot that, that you pointed to. What color or colors do you see in that spot that you pointed to? First impression, don't overthink it, first impression. Good. Now I want you to connect to the divine source, the higher source. And in this connection, I want you to ask the source what color or series of colors are needed to move this goal or dream 
from its current state to a state of manifestation and materialization. So ask the divine source what color or colors are needed to move the dreamer goal from its current state to having it be manifested and materialized. Whatever color or series of colors you see or hear or feel first is right. Good, and I want you to see that color or series of, series of colors going to the spot that you pointed to now. Just see that color, series of colors in that spot. Letting the divine source fill that spot with that color fully, deeply. So the color of the divine source overtakes the original color so that your dream and goal can be manifested now in the right way possible, in the right way for you. And now just see that color from the divine source, move from that spot and overtake your entire being, your entire body on all levels and all aspects of you now. Just let that color surround you, wash over you, cover you like a blanket of divine source. And make the color even brighter, even stronger. Almost to the point where you can feel the vibration of this color. It's now just beyond the color. You can almost sense that there's a particular vibration connected to this color. And feel the vibration. Feel it, make it real. It is yours. This vibration begins to bring you what it is that you desire now. Now. Good. Very good. Start to come back. You can wiggle your fingers, wiggle your toes, start to come back, move your head around. And when you are ready, you may open your eyes. Okay. I decided to layer on the first and second exercise together. I was not planning on doing that, but that's what I was led to do in the moment. So how are we feeling? You feel buzzed? You feel high? Feeling clear. Clear. Good. Awesome. Thanks for sharing. Who was that? Was that Adam? Who was that? It was Quasi. Oh, Quasi. Great. Thank you. Thank you for sharing. Anyone else to off mute or come on camera and share how they feel? Good morning. Oh, this is Gina. Hi. Um, I feel great. Um, I'm not going to come off camera because it wouldn't be pretty. Um, but um, I got up this morning and I didn't have time to meditate. And I said, I don't want to miss the woo. I'll meditate after. So now I don't have to. So I manifested this. <laughs> Go, Gina. Go, Gina. Yes, I love them. Yes. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Good. My pleasure. Yes. Awesome. Awesome. Good. I see Zakia says, I feel fantastic. I am confirmed. Awesome. Zakia, okay. I'd like for you to come share verbally. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> um, I know I'm right at the threshold and I've been the one 
pulled me back. Um, and I could feel the release as we did the exercise. I could feel it. Mm. I could feel it. That's awesome. That's great. Thanks for sharing. That's beautiful. Can we get one more comment? I'm sensing one more comment and then I move on to the last exercise. Sweetness puts in the chat. I'm not sure if you want to come and speak it into the space. Catherine. She feels I hear you. You hear me breathing. <laughs> Are you gonna speak as well? I'm glad you're breathing. <laughs> no, um, I don't I don't have my speaking voice. Would you read what I wrote, please? Okay, sure. Your voice sounds fine, but I'll read it. That's great. Yeah, hold on, wait, wait. Oh, I'm sorry, wait. I, I need to, Catherine, I feel like I, I need to hear your voice though. Like I, I, I need to hear you speak this because your voice is great. It's awesome. So I'm gonna welcome you to use your beautiful, powerful voice, even if it's morning voice, and just share with the group because it's awesome. Um, I can't read it. I don't have my own. <laughs> well, you can you can just just speak freely based off of the experience. Oh, so yes. Thank you for the experience. Thank you for your presence and your energy. I appreciate you um, today. So it is my position that there is no lack, mm. and that um, for for me in this season of my life, I'm connecting to um, the completeness, the enoughness of things, and that I have everything that I need. And then also what I want to share with you and the community is for a while, I've been having this thought that what if what I desired was the very thing that the creator desired for me. What if they lined up together? So mm -hmm. that thought came inside of me a while ago. And so I've been, um, as far as I'm concerned, I've been on a conscious, um, been consciously walking into that, is that, um, as far as manifesting, which I think is the topic today, it, it's there already. You know, I, I am to line up with what is. It's there. So there is no lack. And I'm lining up to what is there. And then, of course, joy and peace and serenity is, is the clothing that I wear inside of there. And that, that's what's happening for me. And I believe that I'm connected to what you have been offering and introducing to the community today. So that is what I've been just forced to say, to use my voice. <laughs> It's amazing, <laughs> but I'm so oh. glad you used it because you you said so much stuff that you did not share in that chat, and it's beautiful. Yeah, so that that that's where I am with that. With and then another thing to align with the community is that as far as this time constraint we've been on, I'm not rushing. I'm not rushing, and then when I think that I'm be coming anxious, I, I tell myself, be anxious for nothing. Be anxious for nothing. It is my experience that I miss what, um, what could have been gotten and gained from the rush, right? If I'm in a state of rush, then I'm missing, you know, the wonderfulness of the moment. Like, I was in the market and this little baby was in the cart with her mother and I took time to gaze into her eyes and just seeing inside of her mm -hmm. was the joy that I 
I say I long for, which is there. It's right there. All I needed to do was look into her eyes. And so that was, that was pure wonderfulness. So yeah, that's what I'm going to share with the family. And that now I'm going to the bathroom to get my voice. Okay. Thank you. Thank Bye. you, Catherine. Well, thank you. See, I'm so, so glad you shared. This is beautiful. If I could stand, I, I would stand and give why well, I'm gonna stand. I'm standing to give you some innovation for sharing because you know that was a beautiful share. Thank you for allowing me to share. Awesome. Yeah, my pleasure. That's that was great. Thank you so much. Okay. There's one um message, last message from yeah. Victorious Renee. She says, Yeah, I feel capable. I was on a walk and stretching while you guided us and the three L's of release for me right now, the wires, lack of laziness. Mm. This makes me feel capable to continue to connect with my bodies in their entirety. Thank you for this. Thank you so much for this. Awesome. Thank you for sharing. That's great. Beautiful. Y'all all having some amazing experiences. So this is great. Okay. So this is our last exercise, and then we're going to go off into the world and be capable, amazing people that we already are. All right. So I guess hopefully everyone, everyone can see me. If not, I will try to talk you through this. Um, but you know how sometimes when you receive a gift or get something, your hands come into like, see your hands come together, palms facing up, like you're receiving a gift. So in your hands being in this way, palms facing up, put your hands together. See my hands in the screen this way. Like you're kind of holding something or carrying, you know, like a small gift. I want you to imagine your dream, your goal, what you want to manifest, whatever it is, in your palms, in the palm of your hands. Just see it there, see the end results. And don't, don't focus on the process. As, as I said before in the beginning, you know, you're telling someone that you, you know, you want someone to get you a cup of coffee. Don't tell them, okay, go here, go there, go there, go there. That's kind of seeing the process. Opposed to having them, you know, see the process and tell them where to go. See yourself ready with the cup of coffee, enjoying it. Okay. That's what I want. So see the end result. What is the end result of the thing that you want? See yourself there. Feel the essence of it, the essence. Do you feel peace? Do you feel love? Do you feel joy? Do you feel whatever? Good feelings, whatever you feel. And I want you again, just to have your hands. They don't have to be as high as mine. I'm just doing this so you can sort of see what it's like in the camera. Just having them up. You can have them down like this by your um, this heart or your chest or stomach. But just so it's comfortable for you. But again, I want you to imagine the end results of the thing in your hands. Okay, right now in this moment. So I'll give you about a few seconds to do that. And as it's there, I'm going to just send some divine blessings to it to help add some secret sauce, some special sauce to it. So, okay, so put your hands, you know, up. Um, just put them together, palm facing up, and just see in your palms the end result of what it is that you want to manifest and materialize. You really feel it. Really feel it and see it in your hands. And I'm going to send some energy to it now. All the great ones, divine beings and manifestation visualization. Let's go the blessings. Thank you, blessings. Max, for your help and your blessings now to materialize these in the affirmative in the best way possible for us. Manifest. Materialize. Manifest materialize. 
And if that's materialized, materialized, materialized. Thank you. So it is. So it is. So it is. So be it. Okay, you can put your hands down. Open your eyes. How do we feel? How are we doing? Because I am done. Feeling very peaceful. Thank you. Good. My pleasure. Thank you. And I had a surprise. I had imagined finishing this doctorate of mine and walking across the stage in Chicago, but I'm also picturing my grandson there with me, smiling up at oh. me. So I'm like, I didn't even think about that. He got to go. That. <laughs> That's good. Yeah, it'll be a good good time for him to really uh, see you achieve, achieve that. It's beautiful. Yeah. Anyone actually feel the energy, like in their hands at all? Literally, literally <laughs> feeling the energy. I'm vibrating. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. That's good. Yes, keep on vibrating for the rest of the day. That's beautiful. Cool, cool. All right, y'all. I'm done. Thank you so much for being here. Thanks for joining in. And here's a special offer. So as I, as I said before, this is the Manifestation Magic Class 101. There's a longer version of this, which is a three hour class, which I go into in depth with some really like advanced techniques and things. Um, and the class initial was $50 for Woo members here, $25, you can get it for $25 for the next hour. You can send a payment through Venmo or Cash App, Venmo, dollar sign, Kadeem One, or PayPal, paypal.me, backslash Kadeem One. Once you do that, send an email to me, kadeem at kadeem1.com for access to the course. You can take the course at your own leisure. So it's a course um, that you can watch for a bit, pause, come back to it later. It's not like you have to sort of sit and watch the entire thing all three hours in one sitting. So you can come back to it as you know, much as you need to. Um, but again, that course is called, also called Manifestation Magic. But again, it's, I talk about more things in more detail and share some more advanced techniques. So for example, the one that we did today with the ocean breathing, um, today we did three, but in that class, we do like 10, 10 things to just release out to the ocean. And in addition to that, I do a few other exercises, you know, that really help to clear things out and to uh, supercharge your goals and uh, help them to manifest more powerfully. So if you want this offer again, $25 is half off for today for the next hour. You can Venmo me, dollar sign, Kadeem One, uh, or Cash App me. Wait, sorry, wait. Venmo, wait, wait. Venmo or Cash App, dollar sign, Kadeem One, uh, or PayPal, paypal.me, backslash Kadeem One. After you send up the payment of $25, then send me an email, Kadeem at Kadeem One, and I will send you the link to the course. And then if you want to reach out to me, contact me. I'm like, I'm very strong with branding. So it's all Kadeem One. Facebook, it's Kadeem One. Instagram, Kadeem One. Email, Kadeem at KadeemOne.com. Website is KadeemOne.com. Might be asking why Kadeem One. I don't know, I feel like I need to mention this. Kadeem One. So full disclosure, my last name is not one, <laughs> you couldn't guess. <laughs> but my first name is Kadeem. Full name is Kadeem Alston Roman. I have two last names, hyphenated. But the one, when I was deciding that I wanted to do this well in this spiritual work more consistently, I figured one, why one? Because I believe the work that I'm doing, it's not coming from me. It's coming through me. I feel like as I do the work, 
I'm channeled, I'm being channeled, being one with the divine source to help spread to others. And I believe as I spread the work to others, that we also become one with the divine source. So that's why it's being one. Just felt like I need to share that. All right. Love offerings, Zell, quick pay, soul leadership development at gmail.com, um, cash app, dollar sign, spirit of woman, or uh, use cash app dot me, backslash dollar sign, spirit of woman. This is for donations, love donations, love offerings to me, and you can use the code uh, pound six two three K O for donations. Okay, the link is dropped in the chat as well for you all. And there's additional ways that you can donate. So you can um, support Kadeem on his link on um, um, using his code. You can also choose a, an amount that will be taken out of your account on a monthly basis. And that number will be divided um, evenly to all the facilitators for that month. So you could choose $25, $50, $75, $100, whatever works for you. Set it and forget it. The links are, are that too. The link will also be dropped in the chat. And those will be your monthly automated love offerings. Next up, we have Gina. And she's going to be presenting Reading is Fundamental. And that's tomorrow, Wednesday. And Shawnee joins us again on Thursday for the topic, the midpoint, checking the view from the center. All right, so keep coming back. We got stuff happening this week as well as every week. New members, if you're out there, say that you're new so that you can get the, um, the communication, the, the love, the hugs from us and the welcomes. We want you to Keep enjoying the sessions. We have something interesting today, well, at least five days a week. And those days are Sunday, Tuesday, and Thursday from 7 to 8.30, and also Monday and Wednesday from 7 to 7.30. So we all, you will always find us on Zoom, streaming live on Facebook. And here's something special. If you want text alert to wake you up in the morning to stay, get up and wake up everybody, this is what you want to do. Take out your phone, type in the number 74121, and then the comment section, type Will Nation, press send, that's it. And you will be on this automated text alert. We have swag. Go to bit.ly forward slash Will Swag. See what we have. This is a small, this is a representation. When you go there, you'll be able to see more descriptions and um, see the colors and the sizes. So we have mugs and thermos. We have a laptop sleeve. We have a bag. We have a journal. We have a mask. We have t-shirts, sweatshirts. So, you know, they make great gifts. They make great wares and, and uses. And it's a great way to represent woo and um, become talking points, conversation starters. All right. So, this is what you do if you haven't done it already. Some of you, I mean, at some point you, each one of you have registered. You wanna register every week, bit.ly forward slash wake up movement. It's a, a minute form to fill out. This will allow you to receive the email message in, um, about who's coming up and any latest updates or events that's happening from our facilitators. You can um, also join Facebook group that's bit.ly forward slash woo community. That's where, you are. That's where we are streaming live now. It's a private group and you would need to um, request admittance. You will also, you can also join our page or like our page, our public page is bit.ly forward slash woo nation. And Instagram, check us out at wake up everybody virtual. We're on YouTube, bit.ly forward slash woo on YouTube. And we, are, we have an email for you to send us any comment, commentary, um, questions, info.wakeupseries at gmail.com. At this moment, I'm going to stop the screen share. This is the time where we can give Kadeem our um, love shower for doing this wonderful session. So 
platform. Thank you. Thanks, Kadeem. Thank Appreciate you, brother. Thank you so much. Thank you. 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 Thank you.